Hey Stampers, this is Linda Schmidt with Stampin' with the Hounds. Um, today I've got a fun uh, technique. Um, this is called Trapped Ink. And there's a couple different ways that you can do it. So I'm going to show you today uh, both ways. Um, the first one, it has um, more of like the colorful, like the you see the image and then the color is like trapped underneath it. Um, so that's the first one. Then the other one it's opposite. It's like the color is behind um, and then you've got more of that white kind of where the ink resisted or the stamp um, resisted the ink. So those are the two different ways. I'm going to start off with this one first, which is kind of more of the traditional um, trapped ink. So on this one, what you um, need to have are... Um, three to four kind of coordinating um, colors that are going to blend well together. I'm using um, today the uh, Bumblebee ink pad, uh, Cherry Cobbler, uh, Evening Evergreen, and then Misty Moonlight. So the Bumblebee, the Evening Evergreen, and the Misty Moonlight, these are all um, in colors for this year. And then Cherry Cobbler is in our Regal family. Um, and then you'll just need uh, uh, either vanilla, a uh, basic white. Um, you can also use glossy uh, for this. Um, but the first thing you want to do is take your, um, you can either use some like temporary adhesive and just place it. Or you can also use your, uh, actually maybe I'll do that instead, your silicone mat. Because this will kind of help grip the paper so that it doesn't move around um, while you're doing the blending. So we'll start off, I'm going to start with some of the lighter colors. And you want to think of when you're doing this, like think of your um, stamping and how you're going to do it. So I was kind of focusing my yellows and reds kind of where I knew my flowers were going to be. And then um, the greens and stuff with where my leaves. And here I did get a little bit of the yellow and red, but um, it doesn't really matter. But that's kind of like what I was kind of focusing on. And then, oh, I just got to make sure my, I was doing some other colors and my one blending brush got a little, a little grungy here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the bumblebee. And in a circular motion, uh, I'm going to start here in the corner. And I'm just applying that ink. And you want a nice, good, dark color. So keep the more you blend, the darker that color is going to be. And then I'll do a little bit of yellow over here. Okay. And then I'll do my cherry cobbler. And my cherry cobbler, uh, my this brush is a little damp, so the color is going to be super vibrant. So I'm going to tap off to get some of that excess color. And then I'm going to come in do some cherry cobbler and you can kind of blend on top of that other color that you did so like I'm gonna now because yellow and red make orange so now I'm kind of getting that orange color so just in that circular motion the more you blend the smoother it gets kind of go around the edges a little bit here more down here and then I'm going to go back now with my evening evergreen so again this is another kind of dark color so kind of start off on the edge and then bring it onto that cardstock And then I'd like to go back again with that yellow and then I'm just going to kind of blend everything back. Make sure there isn't any green on there. All right. And then once you're happy with that, I want to make sure that that is dry. So um, I just kind of take a cloth and just kind of wipe off some of that excess ink. 
and then we'll clean this up so I don't get my hand stuck in it. <laughs> okay. So now you want to take your um, embossing buddy and if you don't have one of these, this is just removing some of the static electricity from the cardstock. Um, you can use like a fabric bounce sheet um, that'll help get rid of some of that um, static electricity too. And I'm just closing up my ink pad so I don't get powder and stuff on here. Okay, and then what you're going to do is now you're going to take your stamps and you're going to use the uh, Versamark ink. And since these are photopolymer, I like to use my um, stamping foam uh, mat just to help uh, give these um, stamps a little bit of a cushion. So I'm going to take the Versamark and I'm using the bigger, uh, the Dahlia, so I'm just going to apply the ink directly to the stamp. And I'm going to stamp this Dahlia kind of like three times. So I'm going to go off here to the corner, kind of going off the paper. And then because I'm kind of lifting off that ink, I am going to wipe this down with a cloth before I put my Versamark pad back on it because otherwise your Versamark pad will get really gunky. So it's kind of hard to see um, because this is a clear stamp, but I'm doing, there's a flower here and there's a flower there. And then again, just kind of wiping off that excess ink. And then we'll do one more here. Kind of on the bottom. And then I'm gonna fill in with my leaf stamp. Put this right here. So I know I've got kind of one here. Let's see, maybe I'll go off this way. And if you, when you're stamping it um, at home, if you kind of look at an angle, you can kind of see your clear images and that kind of helps. I'm just going to rotate this around. And maybe I'll do one like up here. Coming in that way. And then I think I've got everything stamped. Maybe we'll do one more little leaf there. Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to apply your clear embossing powder on top of this. shaking off that excess and then you will need to go back um, oops. I'll get that later and then just kind of tap off where you don't want that powder so I'm trying to remove some of this powder that's not on the stamped image because I don't want that embossed. So it looks like my, I probably should heat set my um, paper before I did the Versamark and stuff because it is kind of sticking even with that embossing buddy because I think my uh, paper was still a little, still a little damp. But then Not too bad. See, even the card designer has issues some days. <laughs> there are definitely days that I'm like, oh, can't do anything. <laughs> okay. So that looks pretty good. Okay. All right, then you're going to heat set that as well to get this shiny.
So then once it starts to get glossy, you move on, Oops. you move on to the next section. Now you're like, oh, Linda, that looks wonderful. But we got to watch the magic. So let this kind of cool. Okay, and then once the paper isn't no longer warm and the ink isn't, or the embossing image isn't tacky, now we're going to take a dark ink. And now this can be, it can be black. It can be like a dark, like early espresso, like a brown. Um, it can be a navy, any dark color. So I'm using Misty Moonlight. And I'm gonna take, um, I still got some embossing powder here. I'm gonna, oh, here's my foam brayer. So you can use the foam brayer. Um, you can also use your blending brushes, but I found for this one, like I kind of like, I like the, the foam brayer. So I'm gonna do, oh, here, I need my mat again so I don't get, this will kind of grip my paper again. So I'm going to ink up the foam brayer, and with the foam brayer, you want to make 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 sure you pick a direction and always ink your roller in that same direction. So I'm going away, 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 and then I'm also going to start off on my silicone mat, and then work my way, and I'm brayering over everything because now what we're doing is we're we're making this background dark so that our colors that we inked are gonna pop and look really pretty once we have this all done. And so when you brayer, I'm kind of going back and forth, kind of making like an X. And then I'll flip my paper around and do the same thing on the other side. So just kind of going back and forth. Make sure that background is nice and dark. Then what you're going to do is take, again, take a Kleenex or a paper towel. And now we're just going to buff. And I'm just gonna take, so I don't get inky fingers. Um, you're just gonna buff that color off of your embossed images. So we're just kind of removing that blue from the raised images. So that navy ink resisted these raised images. So that's kind of now the ink is trapped underneath that embossed image, which is kind of cool. All right, and then just take a cloth and clean off your silicone mat and your fingers. <laughs> okay, then the other thing that I like to do is take um, my white craft ink refill and I am just going to put a little bit on my palette here and I'm going to take my water painter and it's got water in it. I'm just going to put a little pool of water here. And I want to get some white ink refill on this bristle. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just tap and we're getting that white splatter 
in that navy background. This is totally optional. It's just one of the things that um, I just think it's kind of a cool effect. So, And then I will let that dry and give another quick shot. And then I just take a cloth and kind of pick up any of that excess that was on the raised images and just kind of buff that off. Okay, so that's the first way. So you're applying the color first and then you do um, make sure all the static electricity is off the paper and then you're doing the Versamark stamped images on top of it and then you emboss it and then you brayer a dark color over it and then wipe off any of that excess ink. So that's the first way of doing the trapped ink. And then that is how on this card I finished it by just layering this behind a quarter sheet of white paper. Um, and then I just added some of the evening ever or evening evergreen um, or organdy ribbon with it. And then I did my uh, saying you inspire me and I took the so I stamped it first and I just did the white embossing powder. And then all I did is just manually cut this apart. So I cut the me and the you and the inspire. And then those were just then glued on to my little circle, which I had stamped the um, You Inspire Me. So that was how that card was completed. So now for the other way of doing this background, you're going to do the embossing first, and then we brayer the colors over it. So for this one, again, I'm just using like a vanilla um, paper. And I am going to now do my stamping first. So I want to make sure, again, I'm going to take my embossing buddy and get rid of some of this static electricity. And I'm going to do my stamping first. I'm going to take my, make sure this is clean. I'm going to take my Dahlia again. And I'm going to ink one there. Filling in, so let's see here. We'll do we'll do leaf coming off here. Okay, so it looks like I've got everything covered in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this in the clear embossing powder again. Make sure everything's covered so it looks good. Close this up so I don't spill it. Okay, and then we'll emboss this.
let that cool. Looks like everything was embossed. Okay, so now same thing. We're going to take those same colors. And I'm going to use my blending brushes again. over with my green my leaves are so again and then that circular motion okay and then I'm gonna do my bumblebee back with that cherry cobbler. Again, this I kind of work on the edges. Okay, and then again, you're going to take that um, Kleenex or a paper towel and buff off this excess ink that is on the raised embossed images. off your mat. And so this is, and then as, as it dries, it does kind of change colors a little bit because um, this one kind of still looks a little pink, but as it sits and dries, this is, I did this one probably about an hour ago. Um, and so that one, it kind of, the colors turned out really, really nice on there. And on this one, um, I didn't do any of the fl uh, flicking with the white crafting because I just thought it, um, I didn't think it really necessarily needed it on this one. So in that one, again, uh, to finish off this card, all I did was just wrap that ribbon around there. I layered it behind some of the evening um, evergreen cardstock and then the bumblebee cardstock and then just stamped out um, a sentiment um, with one of our punches. So those are the um, trapped ink uh, technique. So I would love to see your creations on my Stampin' with the Hounds uh, Facebook page. Um, and again, thanks for joining me and I will stamp with you again soon. Bye-bye.